Okay, Lindsay, let me see if I can try to make this uh, work for you. Okay, so you have 11 by 17 as your max. Um, so what I'm going to do is go into Inkscape, which is a free program. You've probably heard about it on um, the group. So open up Inkscape. It's going to look very much like this. I'm gonna, it'll have a black document already uh, loaded up. It's usually A4, I think, the paper. Uh, but anyway, we're just going to disregard. Go to File, down to Document Properties. Okay. So if this is in inches, change it to inches um, or whatever you like. So under display, um, just click the little box here, and then we're going to make our custom shape here. So 11 by 17, so we'll go to 22 wide, uh, and I'm an idiot, so 17 times 2. I would normally leave something for margins, but I'm not going to right now. Just keep it simpler, I guess, so 34. I could have done that in my head, but I'm trying to think at the same time. So. Um, there we go. So we have a 22 by 34, which is two of your pages, four of your pages. Okay, so if you had a really big thing you wanted to do, that would do it. Um, okay, so then just X out of that. You hold down the control key and roll your mouse wheel to zoom out. So here's our big gigantic page. And what I'm going to do is um, 11 by 17. I'm going to take um, a rectangle tool here. That's um, this little rectangle here. This is your tools panel. Your selector tool in, in the top left hand corner would be the one that you grab things and drag around. We'll use that a lot. But for now, just the rectangle tool. And I'm going to drag out a, um, a rectangle here. And right now it doesn't have a color. You can just go in here and pick a color. Um, but what I want to do from the very beginning is stay organized. So over here on the right, this is um, I'm going to have as many uh, windows here. Um, they will show up when you select something like Trace Bitmap. The tool will show up over here, which is a great tool. Uh, but anyways, for now, this will be here. This is your Layers panel, and it looks like a stack of um, page pages. So what happened was, is I drew that rectangle and it showed up in the layers panel so this is rectangle number two so i'm going to stay organized double click on that and name it orange um only because you'll see why this program while it's great it doesn't have little icons to sort of show you what your it just says rectangle so when you get a couple rectangles it can get confusing so if we stay organized from the beginning we can avoid any confusion um down the road so what i'm going to do is um I need to resize this. So up here at the top, you're going to have your sizes. And again, it's in millimeters. So I'm going to go and scroll this up to inches. So I'm going to say a width is 11 and a height is 17. Okay. I'm going to put that in the upper left hand corner. I can verify that it's in the upper left hand corner by X. It goes off the top left hand corner. X is um, to the the right, so this is zero up on the ruler here, and so I want to I'll just keep double check that that's a zero, and then um, so no sorry x is a zero and the y is a zero the y is the up and down, so the top left hand corner of uh, a rectangle down here is going to be at um, 17 inches, so it's 17 down, um, if that makes any sense. So it's when you go to your right, it's going to be. 1 inch, 2 inch, 3 inch, 4 inch, so x1, x2, x3, x4. So if it's 1 and a half inches, x1.5, everything goes off that top left hand corner and off the top left hand corner of your shape. So that's how that works in space. But you can also just sort of drag them around and plug it. Um, I know that they're snapping in this program. I normally use Affinity Designer, but this is going to work for us. So, anyways, I'm going to make sure those are zero, zero. We've got an orange. Okay, so <laughs> the next one should be easier. I'm going to hold down Control and hit um, D for duplicate. And I'm going to choose another color. I'm going to say yellow. And I'm going to name look in the layers panel. You see that one is highlighted. So I'm going to double click on that one and change it to yellow. All right. And then I'm going to drag this one um, and select it. I'm just going to go to Y. And since we're doing 11 by 17, so it'll be 11 over to the right. Um, uh, so the X will go 11. Could be perfectly 
over there. Okay, and then now uh, I didn't change the color. Yellow. Okay, so we have a yellow one, and now I'm going to hit Control D again, and we'll make this one red. And that one is select day, we'll change it to red. And then just to be very, very, uh, I keep saying that. Red, please. And I want to change that one to Y, 17 inches down. So that one's going to go down there. And then I'm going to do one more copy. We'll say um, Control, hold down Control, hit D for duplicate. And we'll make this one say blue. And I'll try to change it the first time. Blue. Okay, and then this one is going to go, we'll take the X over to the left. We're going to go all the way to the left, which is zero again. So that takes it a bit. So now we have all of our shapes in these four layers. So now what we need to do is bring in an image. So I'm going to go over to File and down to Import. So I'm going to import an image. And we'll just say we got a picture of this little goofball here. And it's going to say, you know, keep the DPI from the file. All this is usually fine. You say OK. And then boom. OK, so this is obviously it's still too big, just a big image. So I'm going to hold down Control um, to resize this so that it maintains its aspect ratio. Um, alternatively, I could go up here to the top and hit this um, block uh, button there. But hold down Control, do the same thing. So now I'll say I want it to be maybe this big okay make sure that we don't go into our margins still you know you got that you know I always call it like a half inch it's like a quarter inch but I'm just gonna call it a half inch and then you gotta remember that you're printing on four sheets so you're gonna have a quarter inch on the inside as well so we're gonna compensate for that by just try to stay like an inch away from the edges um, you can eyeball it but you can also verify it by going up here and you know doing the math you know this is approximately uh, 28 by 15 so now that we've got this lock I can change this to say the high limit of even 30 or something like that okay so there's our image it's I'm going to sort of just um, center it here and then what we're going to do is we've got four colors we need four copies of this picture so I'm going to hit control D with the image selected control D there's two three and then four okay so now I'm going to name this one image, and I'm just going to hit um, the right arrow to go over and just, just write let red. Okay, and then I'm going to go to the next one, and I'm going to call it um, orange. doesn't matter really right now, um, just to keep it organized again, because Inkscape is a great program, it's just not 100% intuitive. <laughs> But we can beat it by staying organized. So we've got yellow, and then our last one is blue. Okay, so we'll just say image blue. We just really need taglines so that we know what we're doing. Okay, so we've got four copies, uh, four colors. What we're going to do is, so I've got the blue selected, image blue, which is a copy of this in blue. I'm going to whip, um, I'm going to hold down the control key. While this one is highlighted, and if it if it ends up not getting highlighted, then um, just go ahead and click uh, select over here. Hold down the control key and click on the blue layers, image blue and blue square. Okay. So what we're going to do now is right click on either one of those panels and go down to set clip group. And what that did is that pinned. A copy of that picture to that square but since that square is only so big it's only a bit of that um, I'll show you what I mean now that that has been done watch what happens when I pull it out I've only got the picture is still there but we're only seeing this amount that's clipped to that um, that picture so I've basically pulled out the lower left hand corner of that of that picture now so anytime you need to undo something that you've done if you screw up hold down control and hit Z and Z for zebra or you can go up to edit undo and redo because that way in most programs so so now we've got um, if you wanted to you could say um, name that uh, lower left 
Okay, so that one's been done. And it, you can tell now that it's a group because it's got a little um, diamond next to it, which means you can open it up, and the clip is the, is the image on the inside and the blue square. So those are the, these two objects together. But you don't need to worry about that. Just keep it closed. We're going to go to the red one. You just go any of them you want to. And we got the red um, the copy of the image, image red, and the red square. I'm going to hold down Control. So that both of them are selected, right click, and set clip group. And then we're going to call that one uh, red. Oh no, we're going to call that one um, lower right hand corner. So lower right, if you want to, that's fine. So we've got image orange, which is up the left. So I'm going to click on image arms. So select it, hold down control, select the orange copy of the picture, right click, set the clip group. And we're going to call this one left just like that and then we got one last cop to do uh, click on the yellow image hold down control select the yellow square right click select um, set clip group and we're going to name this one upper right you could do the you could just do one two and three and four if you, how you want to do it so now we've got all of our uh, pieces in order. So generally what I would do here is um, I would say take this lower right one, okay? Um, you can separate them now, it's fine. But what I would do is um, you could save this document so you could use it later, you know, just go to file and save. Um, you could also export this to a PNG or however you want to do it. Um, when you hit export, we get a little over here next to the layers panel, a little thing, and basically it's just gonna first you'll set here it says PNG, you could do SVG, JPEG, blah blah blah. So you do that, and you'll click this little folder, and basically just point it to where you want uh, it to save and um, the file name, that sort of thing. Sometimes even though JPEG is or PNG is selected, sometimes it'll goof up over here. Just double check that you're saving it in the format that you want. Um, anyways. But in order to break this up into files that you can print, I would, um, I don't know that this lets you print a selection. Um, let me double check before I steer you off course. Um, if I get to print, it doesn't seem to let me. Uh, just do. The selection that I've got. Um, image location. Variance. No. Okay. So this is what we're gonna do. It's a workaround. Um, like if I, if I was in um, Affinity Designer, this would be done already a long time ago. But for now, free program. Let's do it this way. We're gonna go to File and hit New, and we'll select our. Uh, go to File again document properties and we're just going to recycle this one so this will have to be done once really just if you're printing it once go to inches and we'll do our 11 <coughs> by 17 so this is your standard uh, paper that you've got or your larger version display units I'll just go ahead and say it's inches in here um, boom okay so now I'm going to go uh, you go back down to your Inkscape uh, in your in your taskbar down here. You'll see that there's two documents open. I'm gonna go back to my other one here. So I've got this. Uh, go to my layers panel just to show you. I got upper right selected. I'm gonna just right click and copy, and then I'll go over to my new document and edit. And so. Hold down control and roll the mouse wheel back, and then I've got this. Okay, I can go in here now in the layers panel um, if you want. And um, with with it selected, in order to do a fill color in, in Inkscape, you just click on any of these colors down here. It'll automatically change the color to whatever you color you click on. And there's plenty more colors over here on the right in this little burger menu and that kind of stuff. If you play with the software later, but um, all the way to the left is the X, and so that will that'll kill your fill. No color. Okay, so 
that way we don't have to worry about printing that yellow so just click on that anywhere and it's going to set the fill color to nothing okay so now this is basically what it's going to this is going to print this is our 11 by 17 this is the portion of the picture that we're going to be printing on this page like um you don't want it down here in like in the place that it was in the in the picture because those margins are going to try to cut some off so center it and then later on what you're going to do is just take your craft cutter or some scissors and a straight line and exacto whatever you got and cut this off you know what i mean and then when you, when you tape your pieces back together on the backhand side, they'll line up. Um, you can do an overlay um, with a little bit, you know, on either side. And what you would do is when we went and did the 11 by 17, you could make your squares 11 and a quarter by a, and 11 and a quarter and have them overlap on your document. Um, and then when you clip it, it's going to take a little bit. From either side if that makes any sense i can explain that later if you want to but basically we're doing the perfect size now but if you were to make those squares slightly both of them slightly wider they would overlap in the middle and this trick would still work and it would just take it would they would share that quarter inch in the middle and you'd be able to print essentially that little part twice um but i don't need i don't do it i i do those garden flags and i do um I tape them together and it's fun, you know, just you have to be careful. So anyways, we've got that one and we just we go to print and just do like you normally do. Um, don't print in Cricut because I don't know why people are doing, I understand that you like Cricut software because you know it or something, but it's terrible for sublimation because of that print uh, then cut thing. It's terrible. I mean, it, it limits your size first, like out the gate. So I recommend using something like Inkscape. I've also, I'll drop another video um, on how to use Photopea. It's an online uh, version of Photoshop, kind of a dumbed down version, but works great. And it's really good for doing a quick print, resizing something and printing it. Um, you can add text in there and do all kinds of stuff. And it has a really good, powerful warp tool for text and stuff and putting on stuff on a curve and, you know, uh, doing logos where you got to put text around a circle, that kind of thing. It's, it's great. I don't use it all the time but in a pinch it, it works really well so anyways just follow your normal procedure for printing here um, if you need to mirror it if you know obviously your printer probably lets you mirror at the last minute um, I don't know that it does if it does not with your image selected up here at the top you've got controls to rotate and stuff and then here's the one here object clip horizontal click just make sure that you drag the you know the image back into the into place because it's trying to flip that whole image still but it's only going to print what's on the screen and uh, there you go and you can print to a PDF if you want to save it for later blah 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 or save this as a uh, separate document you'd have four documents you have to print separately but um, I'm going to assume that you know how to do all that stuff if not again let me know ask questions um, send me a private message if you want to and what I normally do is if, if it's complex or someone's not getting it do a live um, thing where you do Facebook Messenger, you watch my screen, ask questions as I go, and I record the whole session so that way um, when we're done I can send it to you and you can go back and watch it again. So anyways, that hopefully that helps. And then if you're not going to save this, just um, highlight it, hit your delete key, go back over to your other document we've already done in the upper right. So I'm going to drag it over here just so I don't do it again. And then we go back, right click, Copy go back over to your new document. We're going to hit paste. And zoom. I'm going to go again down to the lower left. Hit that X to get rid of that orange. And I will, you know, just for sanity's sake, uh, flip it. Position it where you want to print and print. And rinse repeat. Delete that one. Go get another piece. And it worked well, you know, it's, um, once you've done it a couple times, you'll fly right through it. So this is taking a while because I'm explaining, um, stuff, but it, eh, it's really good. Um, but you're going to like, um, Inkscape if you haven't used it already, because, um, if you say squirrel SVG, if you just want like, uh, something like this, right click it, copy image in here watch how fast this is and paste 
I'm going to go up to my uh, image tracer and hit apply and then boom this is an SVG now this is a straight up vector that I can alter change the nose and it never loses quality it's not a PNG or a JPEG and this one had a background on it um, it didn't have a background on it but if I grabbed one even something like this it has a background this is strictly legal but <laughs> go back over here um, delete these that file I don't think I even want to delete it enough to be able to ruin that. You get a big one like this. See, watch this on the right hand side. Like, you can see them. Now you don't you go too far, you, you'll get them back, but you'll find a little place in the middle. Boom. Select tool. Now I've got a SVG copy of that. Review, review. But I want this stuff down here, so what I'll do is I'll get a little move tool. Select, draw the box. Bob's your uncle. You have a perfect ready to cut on your Cricut. Um, you could edit some stuff if you didn't like the way it looked. But you just click and change the color. And it's pretty cool. And you can do layered stuff too. Colored images. That's a whole other topic. But anyways, check out Inkscape. I, I don't use this program a lot except for this feature is incredible. I use it all the time. So anyways, as this video has gotten very long, I'll let you go. Good luck.